With his fashionable clothes and long hair, Jackie looked like a rock star. Jackie! But behind the image was a total concentration on what it took to win races. Jackie could have been a clay pigeon shooting champion. As a teenager, he reached Olympic standard and he still shoots for fun. In 1964, Ken Tyrrell spotted Jackie's talent and hired him for his Formula 3 team to begin a unique relationship. I certainly would not be here today if it weren't for Ken Tyrrell. Um, he always gave me the best mechanics, the best engineering, the best equipment, um, and he cared for me better than any man could have cared for a driver. But BRM were the first to sign him for Formula One, and in his first year he won at Monza and finished third in the championship. A brilliant debut season. Then came a terrible crash at Spa, with Jackie trapped in the wreckage, soaked in fuel. He recovered quickly, though, to begin his mission for greater racing safety and follow Jim Clark to the Indy 500, where he came very close to winning. Indy was something I knew nothing about. Um, I had only seen horror pictures of the biggest accidents the world has ever seen. I thought I'd better go and look at it and maybe try a car to see if I could do it because it kind of specialised, yeah. there was no question. And I just went out there and drove basically by the seat of my pants. Of course I found the walls threatening because you were exiting at very high speed and having to commit to the exit very early on. With eight laps to go I was two laps in the lead um, and I had an engine blow up. It was a disappointment. <laughs> One of the greatest races of all time, in my opinion, was the German Grand Prix, 1968, which you won with a splinted wrist in appalling weather. Uh, maybe my best race ever, uh, certainly biggest challenge. I, I think the fact that there was so much fog, uh, so dense, that my knowledge of the Nürburgring, even though some people may have driven it more often, I was totally confident about where I was going over rises and out of sight corners. I think that helped me. I had good tyres, I had a good car, I had terrific preparation, and I sort of stayed out of trouble. I never did a lap at the Nürburgring that I didn't have to do because I was right up to here and your, the fear of it was enormous. Your recall really is astounding. And the British Grand Prix, 1969, another fantastic race, and Jochen Rint was the man you were racing against. Yeah, it was one of the best races, I think, in, in, in motorsport um, yeah, for quite um, a long time. Yeah. The race with Jochen was a fantastic race. Going down, uh, hang a straight, and would overtake me going into stow. Now, there was no point in me trying to stop him, because he was going to do it, so I would back off and let him through. And then I would do the same to him from club up to, to Woodcott. Funny thing happened, one of his rear wing end plates came undone and was rubbing on the tyre and I thought, oh my God, because it's like a razor edge at that speed, a piece of metal alloy. I'm going past him, going down Hanger Street, pointing with this hand to, to Jochen, who's looking at me, look at your rear right wheel. Whether he could have seen it in the mirror, I wasn't sure. But it was, for me, one of the most important races I ever won. In 1969, Jackie won his first title in Amatra, and at Monza, two-tenths of a second covered him, Rint, Beltoise and McLaren. It's over the line together, and it's almost a dead heat. It's Jackie Stewart. For 1970, Tyrrell was building his own car, but until it was ready, used a march. Tragically, though, Jackie's friend, Jochen Rintz, died at Monza, becoming posthumous champion. In 1971, the Tyrrell was unbeatable. Ken's team was working perfectly. Jackie took his third Monaco win and his second title. He was runner-up in 1972 and champion again in 1973. But tragedy struck the Tyrrell team at Watkins Glen with the death of Jackie's close friend and number two, Francois Sever, who was destined to be his successor. Francois died on what would have been my 100th Grand Prix. Uh, and he died the day before. And I withdrew in respect to him and Ken, of course, withdrew the other car as well. And 
It was a sad way to end my career, but it only confirmed to me that I had done the right thing.